Nestle is the world's largest food and beverage conglomerate. They own approximately 2,000 different brands and sell chocolate, cereal, coffee, baby food, water, ice cream, and a variety of other products with celebrity brand ambassadors like George Clooney as the face of their brand in the United States. In fact, it would be tough to go shopping and not buy something owned by Nestle, despite the fact that the corporation has been accused of some pretty awful things, such as child trafficking, killing babies, exploiting Nepal, claiming water isn't a human right, and a variety of other controversies. So what's the truth? And how is Nestle getting away with it if they really are this evil? This video is a walk into Nestle's dark world. But in order to fully understand Nestle's past, we must first travel back to the man who started it all. The story begins in 1814 with the birth of a boy in Frankfurt. Henry Nestle was the 11th of 14 children born into a family of glaziers who cut and fit glass for a living. However, as he grew older, Henry became interested in chemistry and decided that instead Instead of following in his father's footsteps, he wanted to become a pharmacist. Henry was resolved to forge his own path, and at the age of 15, he moved to Switzerland to work on concocting medications and conducting chemical experiments. In Switzerland, Henry tried a variety of business ventures, including founding and selling the core vinegars, rum lemonade, and even fertilizers. But none of his ventures ever took off. Henry didn't have his big breakthrough until he was in his 50s. It all started when Henry read a report about how infant mortality had skyrocketed since many women were unable to breastfeed their children or their children were allergic to milk. Henry saw this great challenge as a huge opportunity. He was successful by 1867. Henry had invented one of the first baby formulas, a calculated blend of cow's milk, flour, and sugar that could be used in place of natural breast milk. Henry then created a company called Nestle to begin selling it. Unfortunately, this was not a cheerful success story. Baby food, as you know, was the product that launched Nestle's supremacy. It was also the product that would end up destroying lives and causing an international scandal. Henry's new baby formula was a tremendous hit initially. The orders came in so fast that Henry had to open a factory to keep up with the demand. He couldn't believe his eyes. Everything was moving so quickly, and money was flowing in as a result of the great success of this first product. Henry then collaborated with a Swiss chocolatier to create another new product, the first chocolate milk, in 1875. In just a few years, Henry moved from being a small-town unknown pharmacist in Switzerland to becoming one of the country's richest men, and Nestle was growing by the month. In some ways, it was all too much for Henry, who was nearing the end of his life and wanted to unwind and spend more time with his wife. As a result, Henry chose to retire and sell his company a few years later. Nestle's new owners had enormous hopes to develop the company. So in 1905, they combined with a competitor company that sold similar products called anglo Seuss and the two companies became known as the Nestle Group. By combining all of their resources rather than competing, they were able to quickly dominate the market and increase their product line. Nestle started developing new chocolates and beverages by the 1920s, and by 1938, they had developed the first mass-market coffee, which was included in all U.S. soldiers' emergency rations during World War II. In addition to developing new goods, the Nestle Group frequently purchased other companies that they saw potential in or thought may be serious competitors. So, as the years passed, Nestle's product line expanded, as did their money and influence. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough for them, and a plan was being devised behind the scenes. A plan that would generate millions of dollars at the expense of millions of lives. Nestle's baby formula was initially sold merely as an option for those in need. But by the 1970s, about a century after the company's inception, sales appeared to be declining and Nestle began to become greedy. They wondered if they could market this infant formula to all women rather than simply those in need. Despite all of the other goods Nestle had launched, baby formula remained one of the company's most profitable items, owing to its strong profit margins. Consider how much money they could make if they could broaden their market to include all mothers. Nestle launched a campaign to aggressively promote its baby formula as superior to breast milk. 
despite evidence to the contrary. Nestle's formula was far inferior to natural milk since it lacked many of the nutrients that infants required to stay healthy. Encouraging moms to switch when it wasn't necessary put their newborns at danger of illness and malnutrition. Nestle began paying doctors and hospitals to promote their formula by telling mothers that it was superior to breastfeeding. In Africa and Asia, saleswomen would dress up as nurses and persuade moms to stop nursing and use their formula. These women were compensated on a commission basis, which meant that the more formula they sold, the more money they made. These saleswomen would wander the halls of maternity wards and even pay unexpected visits to mothers in their homes, selling them samples of Nestle's infant formula. The moms would have ceased producing milk naturally by the time the samples ran out, leaving them with little alternative except to pay for Nestle's pricey product to keep their infant alive. But wait, there's more. The severe effects were felt in third world countries where safe water was scarce. Nestle was persuading families to use their infant formula in areas where clean water was scarce. These newborns did not obtain enough nutrients from the formula, resulting in malnutrition and famine. Nestle officials were called before the United States Senate in 1978 for inquiry concerning the impact of Nestle's formula milk on all of these sick or dying infants, and soon after, the World Health Organization adopted new restrictions. However, because of regulations and laws were not well enforced in Southeast Asia and the Pacific, Nestle increased their marketing efforts, and their sales continued to rise in many of these developing countries with fewer restrictions. Nestle's CEO also hinted that access to water was not a basic human right, which he later apologized for after the media criticized him. However, we can understand how he truly feels by seeing Nestle's actions around water. In Pakistan, for example, in 2013, Nestle began diverting good drinking water away from villages and towns, then bottling it in their facilities and selling it back to the same people who had taken the water but at a considerably higher price. Nestle has also been found to use child slavery and forced labor on farms where cocoa beans are gathered, and for a long time, this cheap, exploitive labor was mostly unrecognized, resulting in low costs and big profits. To be honest, we could go on and on about the company's charges, such as the court case that claimed Nestle's dog food was dangerous, or the fact that their coffee plantations actually used forced child labor. But here's the thing, because of all the controversies Nestle has been engaged in, many people have sought to boycott Nestle's products. But the company is so large that it's almost impossible due to the sheer number of products they sell. They have products in practically every country and in a wide range of sectors. You may be purchasing Nestle brand food, drinks, or even cosmetics without recognizing it. The problem is that when Henry Nestle launched the company, he was fixing a genuine problem. But as the company evolved, their business strategy began to create difficulties instead. Of course, when you've been in existence for hundreds of years, and are owned by so many brands, some controversies are inevitable. Just ask Coca Cola. Thanks for watching. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more videos about your favorite wealthy families are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.